Hello everyone and welcome to episode one of Designer Chat. Today we are going to be talking about my design inspiration and my process and I'll also cover a little bit of how and why I get, got started as a knitting pattern designer. My name is Jessica McDonald. I am, like I just said, a knitting pattern designer and I am coming to you from a tiny town in the mountains of Idaho where I live with my family and all of our many and many animals. If you like this video as well as my other videos, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like my designs, please go down into the description box below this video and sign up for my email newsletter. So first of all, let's start with what I am wearing. Today I'm wearing my Wild Horse cardigan. It is a top-down raglan construction shawl collar cardigan. I think I released this pattern two years ago now. So you can find this pattern that I'm wearing for this cardigan that I'm wearing on Ravelry and my website. It features these really simple textured um, garter stitch sections in the raglan lines and it has a massive squishy shawl collar which is honestly the best thing about this uh, <laughs> sweater the shawl collar is huge and I love it so much and it also has some really nice garter rib texture in the cuffs and on the hem, even though the shawl collar itself is just all garter stitch. So you don't have to knit or knit and purl all through the, um, the shawl collar. You can just knit, 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 knit. And there's some detail of the uh, raglan lines there. So this one is called Wild Horse and it's available on my website and on Ravelry. You can go get the pattern if you like this one. So today we're going to talk about my inspiration and my process. I am largely inspired by nature and the world around me, but I am also in part inspired, I don't know if I'd call it inspired, but kind of directed by what I want to wear. So basically it comes down to what I see in nature and what I want to wear. Um, as a finished sweater. So this this sweater that I'm wearing right now, Wild Horse, this was not inspired by nature or I didn't see a tree that I wanted to bring into a sweater. I didn't see a color palette in, that, in nature that I wanted to somehow draw into a sweater. I just wanted a top-down raglan shawl collar cardigan with some really simple detail and a huge collar, <laughs> a huge collar. So that is how Wild Horse came about. The inspiration was not nature or a building or something outside of myself, perhaps. The inspiration was very much, what do I want to wear? And this is honestly the perfect cardigan for me because I wear it all the time. It's amazing and I love it. You'll notice that it doesn't have any buttons. That is because I have a million small children and they like to button my sweaters when I'm wearing them. And it's really annoying. I just like, I'm trying to cook or I'm trying to sit there and then all of a sudden there's these little hands coming around messing with all of my buttons. So there are no buttons on Wild Horse because I didn't want my children to be messing with the buttons while I was wearing it. Other times I'll be inspired by something that I see in nature. For example, we're going to start with Ruska. Ruska is a sweater that I released several years ago. I don't know how many years ago now, but you can see the color scheme in it. We've got some dark, really dark gray, and then this golden yellow color. One day as I was driving my daughter to school, I saw like the aspens on the mountains were just the perfect, bright, brilliant yellow. Uh, just that the perfect, like the very peak of the Aspen's fall color. And it was a rainy day, so the mountains were all dark and black. And so I wanted to bring that color scheme into a sweater. And that's how we ended up with Ruska. When I started this sweater, I originally wanted to kind of come up with a color work motif that looked exactly like, you know, the mountain with little pockets of Aspen's here and there on it. But I ultimately abandoned that idea because I thought it would be a lot more fun to just take the colors from my inspiration and put them into a sweater and use Shetland knitting techniques so that it was really fun and enjoyable. And this is honestly, this is one of the funnest patterns I have ever 
design. Knitting it is just an absolute joy. So this is Ruska. It was designed by, or not designed, it was inspired by a rainy fall day. You can see that was the inspiration behind this one. So that, I took the color scheme that I saw in nature and I put it into a sweater. Sometimes I get a little more literal, like in this one. This is Snowy Pines. It came out last fall and is also in my book, Forest. Um, my book, Forest. Um, if you would like a copy of Forest, they're on my website. But this one was inspired by snow falling on the forest, on pine trees. So you can see at the very top, we've got the snow falling down on my pine trees. This was a more literal translation of the inspiration into a sweater. And then like this lower part of the yoke wasn't inspired by snow falling on pine trees. It was just, I put the snow and the pine trees at the top and then I needed to add more to the yoke to fill it out. And so I added in this really pretty graphic motif that I thought worked well with it. So my inspiration that comes from nature, I can bring into I can bring into a sweater either literally like in snowy pines where I have literally put snowflakes and trees into the yoke or I can bring it in it's just like I want this color scheme in this sweater and I'll like like in Ruska where I took the color scheme of the aspens on the mountains and put it into the sweater right now um, I'm gonna set these to the side just chuck them over there uh, right now, I'm really inspired by this plant called Curly Dock. You probably know what I am talking about. I'm going to show you. Let's see if it will... This is a plant down on my property. I took a video of it and some pictures. I'm sorry, my hand is shaking. I'm not a tripod. <laughs> but you can see that it's got this really lovely color. The rusty red color is just absolutely stunning. I love that color and that's what originally pulled me towards that plant is the color of it because I just I love that color. It's not red, it's not brown, it's just this really rich warm rusty brown color that I would really love to wear. As I have been Getting older and older, I am moving more into a very autumnal color palette. Back when I was younger, I used a lot of blues. I used a lot of lights, pastel -y colors. But as I get older, I think that I prefer an autumnal color scheme, like those rusty browns or rust or um, any color you see in autumn, the golden, leaves the maybe even a, you could take the red of rose hips but i don't really like red um it's not my favorite color but all of those colors you can find in autumn out in nature mind you <laughs> um all those autumnal nature colors i really am drawn to them and i'm finding myself using them more and more frequently so this rusty red color that the curly dock is really appealed to me. I actually pulled over on the side of the road because there was a big patch of it growing and I pulled over on the side of the road to look at this plant because I was like that is the perfect color and I really want a sweater in that color. So I had to pull over on the side of the road and take a picture of it. But this picture is from a plant that's on our property that I found later but um, it was a little bit <laughs> crazy to just pull over on the side of the road to look at a plant because I want to turn it into a sweater. But the, the, the first thing that appealed to me is the color of the sweater, uh, the color of the plant. And I would love to have a sweater that color. And I think that if I had a sweater in this color, it would coordinate really well with a lot of the rest of my wardrobe. So I'm trying, I'm trying really hard to create a cohesive wardrobe as I go through life because sometimes I can just like, I love this thing and I want to have this thing or make this thing. So I'll buy it, this item of clothing or I'll knit this sweater, but it doesn't go with anything else in my closet. And so it's kind of like hit and miss, like putting together outfits. So I'm trying, I'm trying to be a little bit my, more, uh, a little more organized in how I put together the clothing that I 
make and buy for myself. But I think that this color of the curly dock would work really well with a lot of my clothes. I do have a lot of green linen dresses. It's kind of a, um, it's kind of an addiction of mine. And I would wear, I would absolutely wear this rusty brown color with green. I think it would be um, a nice combination. I would also wear this a lot with blues. And I've just ordered a couple of new blue dresses. Um, coming back into blues. Uh, I just ordered a couple new blue dresses, but I also think that even though it would kind of be a neutral, it would also work well as a the more statement color in a neutral outfit. Like if I wore a pair of jeans and a gray t-shirt, I could wear a cardigan in this color. So this color right there, and that would be my like impact color, my focus color. I don't know what, what fashion people call it, but it would be the, the focal point of the wardrobe would be that card cardigan if I was wearing it with an otherwise neutral outfit or say I wore this cardigan that I'm thinking of over top of this. This is just a natural colored linen dress and you can see I really like wearing it with the rust color wild horse. I think these colors go well together and I enjoy wearing them together. So if I made a cardigan in this color, it's not focusing on in this color, it uh, would work well over this neutral dress. I've also got a charcoal gray skirt that I can wear it over. I've ordered a, um, if you're familiar with Not Perfect Linen, I've ordered a sand gingham Marseille skirt. So it's like brown and black gingham. I've ordered that and that would look nice with a cardigan in this color. Um, I would also really like to add some charcoal gray dresses to my wardrobe because I really like gray. It's one of my favorite colors. And I think that charcoal gray is a really warm color. You may be looking at me like I'm insane, <laughs> but I think charcoal gray is a warm color and I really like when I see charcoal gray together with kind of a reddish brown. I like those colors put together. So if I knit a cardigan in the color of this curly dock, I could wear it really easily with jeans and a tee if the tee was a neutral color or I could wear it with my blue dresses that I've just ordered or I could also wear it with my green dresses that I already have or a neutral colored dress. Um, or someday when I do acquire some charcoal gray dresses, I could wear it with those charcoal gray dresses and it would be a really warm and rich color combination and an outfit that I think I would really love and gravitate towards. <sighs> maybe this is a little bit long-winded. Maybe we've gone on a little bit of a tangent from uh, my design inspiration, but this is like, this is the process that I go through when I'm designing a sweater. I think the whole thing through, I don't just, I think about it for hours and hours and hours before I ever like sketch it out or write down the idea or look for a possible yarn or think about, you know, casting on, I have already thought about this sweater for hours. So another thing to note about this curly dock, we're going to play this little video again. Hopefully it, I'm not shaky this time. You can see that it's got the seed pods on there and there are a little flat disc but when you look at the whole stem of the plant, it's got this little, like the stem of the plant looks like it has dimply texture. So not only do I want to take the color of the curly dock, but I also want to take the texture of the seed heads of the curly dock and put it into this cardigan. I'm probably going to call this cardigan curly dock at this point because it is just purely this plant. Let me back up a little bit. You can see the dimples of like the stems as they have the disc shaped seed heads on them, you can see that it's got a really nice texture to it. So I want to take that texture from the seed heads and from the curly dock plant and I want to put it into this cardigan. I have already decided what texture I'm going to use, what stitch pattern I'm going to use to get that texture. I'm not going to tell you because I don't want somebody else to take this, this idea and run with it because 
in a minute when I talk to you about my process, you'll understand why it takes so long and why I want to be a little bit mysterious about this. But I want to take the color of the plant and I want to take the texture of the plant and I want to put it into a sweater. So I'm thinking about um, what construction do I want? Uh, not only what construction, like what style sweater I want to wear at the end of it, but what construction method would work well with the stitch pattern that I have chosen for this cardigan. So some stitch patterns work really well with a raglan construction. Some don't at all and it's kind of a pain in the butt and you want to do a round yoke or maybe a drop shoulder. It really, like taking your stitch pattern and construction and marrying them together in a way where it looks nice, but not only that, is enjoyable to knit. That's a big part of it, is enjoyable to knit, is a really big part of designing a sweater because you don't want to create something that may look nice in the end, but it's an absolute nightmare to knit. That's, that's not what I'm going for here. I know there's a lot of designers who like to do more complicated knits and they're like the challenge knit and like advance your skills and feel really proud of yourself when you're done with this challenging knit. But that's not me. I don't want to knit that and I also don't want to make you knit that. Like if you want to, there's plenty of that out there. But I want something that's really enjoyable to knit. Something that's really relaxing and you can just pick up a knit and have a good relaxing, engaging time and you're not frustrated with your knitting and you're not like, there's a lot of challenges in life, uh, particularly as a stay at home mom of four children. I have plenty of challenges. I don't need to take the most relaxing activity that I enjoy engaging in on a daily basis and make it challenging as well. I want it to be relaxing. I want it to be like, you just sit down, the kids are all in bed, and you knit for an hour, and at the end of it, it's just like, oh, you're all relaxed, and all the stress is gone. That's what I want my, my knits the, to do for me, and I'm assuming that's what you want your knits to do for you as well. So I'm thinking about how I'm going to take this texture from this stitch pattern that I've chosen that's inspired by this plant, and combine it with a construction method that makes it um, easy to knit and enjoyable to knit that looks nice together. You have to make them look nice together. You have to think about how it's going to look in the end and make sure it's going to look like it makes sense. So I'm thinking about how I'm going to take the texture, put it in a construction method, and I also want the construction method to not be too complicated. I have designed some more complicated patterns, but as I go along, I keep turning to simpler and simpler and simpler construction methods because it's easier to grade, first of all. <laughs> it's easier to grade, it's easier to write, it's easier to knit, and it's a lot... I don't get as many support questions. Like, you don't email me saying, I'm stuck here please help me when I use, you know, an easier, more straightforward construction. Um, a big part of the process is coming up with ways to eliminate those sticky parts because I don't have a ton of time and responding to a ton of support emails is not something that I have time for. So I want to make sure that you don't end up stuck somewhere and needing to email me for help, which if you need help, email me, that's fine. But as I'm going through my design process in my head, this is all still in my head, um, I'm thinking about ways to make it so that you don't get stuck somewhere as you're knitting this sweater. So for this Curly Dock inspired sweater, I have already figured out my stitch pattern. I have a yarn in mind as well that I think would work really well and comes in some really nice colors that are very close to Curly Dock. That is one of the hard things because I can't shop in person. I don't have a yarn store very close to me. So typically I'm just shopping online and it can be kind of hard to match colors when you're just looking at it on a screen. 
So that's a more challenging part. Um, but I've already thought about um, the yarn I'd like to use. One thing I haven't finalized my decision on is if I'm going to make it a round neck or a v-neck. I can't quite decide. I think it would look good as both, but just depending on whether I choose a round neck or a v-neck, that's going to affect how I put together the button band. Um, so I do need to make that decision before too long because how you put the button band on the sweater is going to be different whether it's a round neck or a v-neck. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the process of what I go through when I see something that inspires me and I want to bring it into a sweater. I have some other designs currently going, like um, I have one that's on my needles right now that's called Bow, B-O-U-G-H, like tree bow, not bow to the queen. Um, that was inspired by wreaths, evergreen wreaths, you know, a Christmas wreath made out of pine branches. That's what it was inspired by. And so I'm taking that inspiration and I'm putting it into a colorwork sweater, which I think I'm going to show you next week. So subscribe so you can see the sweater I'm talking about right now. Uh, that's one that's currently on my needles. Uh, what else do I have going that is inspired by nature? My husband's sweater that is currently in purgatory was inspired by what he wants to wear. I have some other sweaters coming that are, um, I think the only other collaboration yarn that's waiting to be worked with. That one was inspired by um, kind of vintage style cardigans. So that's something I want to wear more than pure nature in nature inspired. I'm not like taking nature and putting it into a sweater for that one. That one is, I really like vintage cardigans and I'd like to have one that kind of has that vintage vibe to it. So that will be that sweater, but I haven't even swatched for that one yet. Uh, sometimes when I am designing, I will see a colorwork motif that I really love. Right now, I really, really love giant stars. Just massive, massive stars. I'm going through a huge, massive star phase right now. So, a uh, sweater design that's also cooking up in my head takes this really cool, massive star motif and puts it onto the sweater. Um, so, that one's not necessarily nature inspired, although the colors will be found in nature. It's going to have really nice autumnal colors, but I'm not going to be able to release it until winter. <laughs> so, that will be a little bit of a mismatch season wise, but um, oh well, I guess. Now, let's chat a little bit about my process. So, even though I've been telling you about this Curly Dog inspired sweater that I've got all figured out basically, down to the yarn I want to use. You are not going to see this sweater for a very, very, very long time. Even though I'm, I'm an independent designer and I don't have to deal with publication deadlines and I don't have to meet um, a magazine's deadline or something like that, it still takes me a really long time to go from concept to finished pattern that's ready for you to knit. Part of that reason is because I've already got a backlog of designs that I'm working on. One way that I really like to do my design, my design work is I like to do it as collaborations with yarn companies. So in order to collaborate with a yarn company, I'm working with another person, another organization. So I have to approach them months before I intend to publish this design. So back in late winter this year, late winter, early spring, somewhere in there, I set up a bunch of collaborations with various yarn companies, all of them planned for release sometime this fall and winter. Um, so I'm working on designs that I came up with last year at this time. So last year I came up with design ideas and I put together my concept and how I'm going to create this, this sweater and I found a yarn or a yarn company that I really liked and I reached out to them and I said, hey, I've got this design idea and I'd really like to use this yarn. Would you like to collaborate with me? 
And often they say yes, sometimes they say no. Um, but for all of the ones that said yes, and we set it all up, I give them a timeline right up front, say, okay, I wanna set this collaboration up, but this pattern is not gonna come out until November this fall. That's, you know, six months away, seven months away, however many months away it is. It's a very long way away. I make sure that I let them know the timeline. It's gonna be quite some time before I have this pattern finished. They send me the yarn and um, I begin work on these designs. So I set up a lot of collaborations for this fall back in, I think it was March, maybe February, March, somewhere in there. I set up a lot of collaborations. So I've had the yarn all summer and I've been working on these designs all summer. So the reason why I can't all of a sudden drop everything to start work on this curly dock sweater is because I have arrangements with other companies. I have people who are expecting me to produce a pattern on a certain timeline and I don't want to kind of kick that design onto the back burner and disappoint my collaboration partner in order to start running after a shiny new thing and create a new pattern. So this curly dock design that I'm thinking of, you will probably see early next fall, maybe August, September, sometime in there. That would be a really good time to do that because that's when curly dock looks like this. Uh, so what I will probably do now for this curly dock sweater is I would settle on a final color for this yarn that I'm thinking of and email the company and say, hey, I have this idea. I'd love to do a collaboration, but it won't be until next fall. What do you think? And let's just see what they say. They might say no. They might say yes. If they say no, then I have the option of um, finding a different yarn that I think would work and emailing a different yarn company and saying, hey, you would, I have this idea and I think this yarn would work great for it. Would you like to do a collaboration with me? I can do that. I can switch to a different company and try that. Um, or I can just buy the yarn myself and do it on my own without having it be a collaboration. But I do really enjoy collaborations mostly for the cross promotion that it involves. In a collaboration, I'm really looking for cross promotion. I'm going to be promoting your yarn and I am a very, very good yarn salesman. I know I sell a ton of yarn. A lot of people like to use the same yarn that I used. Um, they'll buy it for different projects along the way as they see me using it or they'll buy it for my exact design because they want to use the same yarn that I've used in the pattern. I sell a lot of yarn. So I'm not generally told no when I reach out for collaborations, but I am sometimes told no. Uh, it used to be really, really terrifying for me to send out an email because like that's kind of like you're putting yourself out there and rejection hurts. Nobody likes to be rejected, but I've gained enough confidence in myself that it's not super scary anymore because I've sent a lot of emails. I've been told no and I didn't die. So, so I'm a lot more comfortable sending those emails saying, hey, I have this idea, I wanna use this yarn. Do you wanna do a collaboration and promote each other? So I'll promote you, you promote me, and it benefits both of us. Both companies benefit, my company benefits, although I am, I am my company. I benefit because I get my pattern advertised on their platform. They benefit because it, They've seen, like, I've advertised the yarn very, very heavily through podcasts and Instagram posts and newsletters and all these things. So a lot of collaborations means that I am usually several months, I, I usually have several months of planned work ahead of me at any point in time. So if somebody says yes to a collaboration, they generally include yarn support and I'll tell them how much of what color of what yarn I want and they'll send it to me. I'll swatch. I'll begin the, the process of actually creating the pattern. So when I'm creating a pattern, the first thing I do is I swatch. You want to swatch very, very big swatches, very big swatches. <laughs> I know a lot of people just do barely four inches by four inches, but you really want to go 
I think six inches by six inches is good. Five inches by five inches at a minimum, but you need to swatch. I swatch, um, I'll tweak the design. If I don't like the swatch, I'll kind of tweak things. But generally, generally I have thought about this design so much that I've thought through any problems that might arise because I constantly think about designs. I've constantly got one stewing in my head. I'm constantly going through the entire thing. I have a very visual brain, so I can picture things in my head very well. I cannot draw, I cannot write things down to communicate this thing that's in my head to someone else, but I can see it very clearly in my head. So generally I don't do a bunch of swatches. Sometimes I might, sometimes I might change my needle size because I don't like the fabric, but generally when it comes down to actually swatching, I have really thought this entire design through and everything is usually pretty straightforward. Not always. I'm about to rip something out. Well, I'm gonna start the new one first before I rip the old one out, but I'm about to rip out a sweater because it didn't work out right. But usually it works out just fine. And then I take my numbers for my swatch and I put it into my spreadsheet and I grade the entire thing. I do not even open my Word document to write my pattern until the entire sweater is graded. It, grading is really important because it might impact the design. You might have designed something that has a yoke that's way too deep or a yoke that's way too shallow, or you might have to tweak some things so that, you know, the largest five sizes look good too, in addition to the smallest five sizes. So you need to grade, I feel quite strongly that you should grade before you write the pattern, before you even cast on the sweater. I know a lot of designers do things very differently and they will just knit a sweater and take notes as they go and then they will grade and write the pattern, but that is not how I do my process. I grade everything first and then I write the entire pattern out. It, like, in my final format, I put all the numbers in, everything is in the final pattern and then I cast on. That way, as I'm knitting the sample, I am knitting through the exact same pattern that is sitting in front of you when you knit. And so sometimes as I go through, I'll hit things, I'll be like, mm, this needs to be worded a little bit differently, or I need to add a little note here to clarify something so that it's not super confusing for you, or there needs to be a tutorial here for this, or things like that as I work through the entire sweater as I knit it myself. So I am the first test knitter of my own design. I don't know if I even call myself a test knitter. Uh, so I'll change things and adjust them as I go through the pattern, any edits that I make as I knit the sample, and then I will change that in the Word document. And then once I've gotten far enough into the sweater that everything is smooth sailing from there, then I will send the um, pattern off to my tech editor. So what do I mean by smooth sailing from there? Generally for a uh, color work sweater, once I'm down into the body and the yoke works out just fine, then I know it's gonna be fine because you know the body is usually just a tube and then the sleeves are just a slightly tapered tube. So generally that all of the uh, all of the excitement in a color work yoke pattern has to do with the yoke. So if the yoke works out good and I've split for sleeves and I'm down into the body and everything's working out great, I know that I can then send that off to my tech editor and it gets tech edited and then when I get that pattern back from the tech editor, I will put it up for test knitting and it will go through the test knitting process and sometimes there, sometimes test knitters make a lot of really good suggestions, sometimes it's straightforward and everybody's like, yeah, it's a great pattern. I don't have anything to say other than I love it. And sometimes people are like, what on earth do you mean by this? <laughs> or you really should change this or mine didn't work out that way. And you have to go in and fix those things. And then after the test knit is complete and you've got all the test knitter feedback. And one thing that I also like to get from test knitters is how much yardage they use so that I can check my yardage calculation and make sure that it's accurate so that you're buying the right amount of yarn when you go to knit the sweater. 
Then after the test knit is done, then we can move into launching the pattern, which launching a pattern is its own whole thing. The marketing part of um, being a knitting pattern designer is huge. It's huge. It's a huge part of my job is the marketing because there's no point. If I couldn't sell enough copies of patterns, I couldn't do this as a business and I'd have to go get a different job somewhere else so that I could actually you know, pay for my kids' braces or pay for my sheep barn or things like that. So marketing is another huge aspect of this business, but I'm not going to go into that there. We're just going to talk about my design process and inspiration, which I think I may have covered in exhaustive detail, I hope. Um, yeah, that's how it happens. That's how it happens. And it's, it's a long process. It takes quite a few months from the, when I first start working on something from when I like cast on the, like not cast on the sweater, but cast on the swatch to when you can have the pattern is four months at a bare minimum. It's four months for a sweater pattern. For like, for like a sock, it could be a lot less if I didn't take four months to knit socks, but I take four months to knit socks. Um, but for a sweater pattern, it's a minimum of, of four months at least. Um, probably even more than that. I don't think that I have brought a sweater to life in four months in quite some time. Maybe a kid pattern would be easier, but I have to allot time for swatching, which is like a week. And then I have to allot time for grading and depending on the compli how complicated the sweater is, the time I spend grading may differ. Like my husband has a top down raglan construction all over cable and textured pattern and I have not finished the grading on that. I have probably spent 20 hours on the grading and I haven't even managed to finish it. I'm having to rip it out because the sleeves are too tight because I don't know if the size chart lied to me or what, but I'm actually thinking about sending that one to a grader. <laughs> so that like top down raglan all over cables is horrible to grade. I'm sorry, it takes a long time. But I can grade a circuit, since, since I do them a lot, I do a lot of circular yoke sweaters, but since I do a lot of circular yoke sweaters, I can grade a circular yoke sweater in an afternoon. Let's say four hours, roughly. I can do it in about four hours of time, the whole thing through from beginning to end. Um, and then I just put the numbers into uh, my pattern. I kind of have the format already put together. And so if I'm doing a top-down circular yoke construction style, I just need to go into my already established top-down circular yoke construction format and I need to change in the numbers for the new sweater, put it all in numbers for the new sweater. Maybe I need to change some instructions around, but I can then write the pattern in another probably two hours or so. So for me to actually do the grading and pattern writing wouldn't be a full eight hour well let's just say a full eight hour day of work for a top down circular yoke sweater um for a all over cabled sweater that your husband requests that would take me an entire lifetime <laughs> and then uh well you also have to consider that i am a stay-at-home mom of four children so i do not have an entire day i cannot sit down for a day and grade and write the pattern all in one day. I cannot do that. I have about one to two hours every day in which I can sit down and work. Today, all of that time is being spent filming this video, editing this video, and getting it ready to upload. That's gonna be all of my working time for today. So I'm not gonna be able to do anything else because I only have so much time in a day. So to get through that whole process of grading and writing the pattern might take another two weeks. So I'm already at three weeks before I even cast on the sweater. And then once I've cast on the sweater, depending on the weight of the yarn, like fingering is gonna take me a lot longer than worsted weight, it will take me a month to month and a half-ish to knit the sweater. And then 
it's got to go through tech editing and um, on tech editing it can take a couple weeks because like she's not going to it's not like she's sitting there waiting for my email to show up in my in her inbox and she's gonna start on it right away I have to wait until she has time in her schedule and then I have to wait for her edits to come back. I need to make any changes to the pattern. Sometimes I need to email back and forth with her and figure something out, have her check it again, wait for her edits to come back after she has time in her schedule. So that can take several weeks to do the tech editing process. And then we're into test knitting. And for test knitting, I like to do a minimum of two months on the test knit um, to knit a whole sweater. Um, Test knitting needs its own designer chat episode, honestly. But test knitting takes a while, so you're at two to three months, depending on how long of a test knit period I do, you're two to three months just in test knitting because I don't want test knitters to feel like this test knit has taken over their life and they can't, you know, go for a walk or something. They need to have sufficient time to knit the sweater in a relaxed and enjoyable way instead of, you know, stressing to me a crazy deadline to knit a sweater. So after that, let's say three months, a month and a half, so that's four and a half months, plus three weeks, that's five and a quarter months, plus another week, that's five and a half months that I think I have um, a listed out for you there. So it takes quite a long time for a sweater pattern to come to life. And then if I'm trying to release this design at a seasonally appropriate time, like a lightweight knit in the summer and a heavyweight knit in the winter, then I am kind of working on things in opposite seasons. So I'm working on winter knits in the summer and summer knits in the winter so that they can come out at a seasonal, seen, <laughs> seasonally appropriate time so that you actually want to knit them when the pattern comes out. I think that I have been talking for a very, very, very long time. I did not expect to have this much to say on this topic. Um, so a little bit about how I got into being a knitting pattern designer. It really started when my youngest daughter was, we were coming into her first Christmas and I wanted to make her a special outfit. And I couldn't find something that I wanted. I already owned some green yarn that I wanted to use. It was a sport weight yarn. Sport weight doesn't have a lot of patterns in it. Sport weight's one of the less common um, yarn weights, I think. So I was trying to find a really cute little something to knit for her and I couldn't find what I wanted. And so I just made something up. Um, I had stitch dictionaries and that was the wildflower tunic that was my very first design that i made up and after i made that and i realized that i could just create whatever i wanted it was it was just unstoppable i just designed everything from then on out um the last time i knit somebody else's pattern was Four years ago, I remember because I was pregnant with Aiden, that's the only reason why I remember it was four years ago. <laughs> the last time I knit somebody else's pattern was four years ago and um, my oldest daughter is now 10, She's, so it would have been 11-ish years ago that I needed to make a special outfit for my baby and started into designing things and then slowly over time I started thinking well maybe I should write down it's a spam call maybe I should write down the patterns for things and put them on Ravelry and then I can you know make a little yarn money and then as I kept going I was like well maybe I can uh, build this into a business that I can do at home and I won't ever have to go work in an office again, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, I do not ever want to work in an office again. Uh, so it, it started very small and it grew out of a desire to make something special for my daughter and it turned into just honestly an obsession, <laughs> an obsession and a, a job for me. So that's, I, I, I am obsessed with designing, even if 
I someday ended this business and no longer did knitting pattern design as a business, I think that I would still constantly be designing things for myself and for my kids. I don't think that that's something that I can ever stop doing, to be honest. I don't think that I can. It's, it's, it's pretty much just constantly thinking about um, different design ideas and how to put them together and how to make it all work out. So I, I am just, I am just a knitting pattern designer. I just design sweaters and whether I did this as a business or not, I would, I would still do it. I don't, it would never end. And that's really fun. So I think that I will go now. I hope you have enjoyed this very first episode of Designer Chat. Um, next week, I hope to have a video for you about on Bao, the sweater that I told you I need to fix. Um, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully I get enough knitting time over this next week until I film again that I can completely knit the entire yoke of the new sweater uh, so that I can show it to you. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and come back next week. I will show you why it's messed up and hopefully have the whole new one ready to show you so that you can hopefully, hopefully see the improved version. If it's not, we'll talk about something else. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next week. Happy knitting. Bye.